Customs officer informed me that the park was closed. He showed me no badge, even when I asked to see it. And he said that despite the fact that I was standing there talking to a 70-year-old woman calmly and having a polite conversation, no one was even arguing, they closed the park, they kicked us out, they told me that if I didn't leave, I could take it up with a judge, which I took to mean they would arrest me, throw me in a concrete box, and allow me to speak to a judge about the Constitution on Monday, since this was a Friday. Is Governor Andrew Cuomo allowed to shut down the Constitution because of allegations of a virus that certain medical professionals argue against? Let's be very clear how we break down this issue. The city of New York, the state of New York, has the power to close a park based on their view that it would be helpful in defeating the pandemic. Absolutely no question about that. The Supreme Court has case after case after case saying that public health justifies uh, closing down parks, closing down uh, public areas. The next question is, does the governor have the right to do that? Governors generally are not authorized to make the law. Uh, they're authorized to enforce the law. So you'd have to look to see if there were legislative authority allowing the governor to close the park. If there is, then it would be legitimate. Uh, let me put it very clearly. You have no constitutional right to endanger the public and spread a disease, even if you disagree. You have no right not to be vaccinated. You have no right not to wear a mask. You have no right to open up your business. Wait, can I stop you? Did, yeah. No right yeah, not state. to be vaccinated? Meaning if they decide you have to be vaccinated, we have to be vaccinated? Absolutely. And if you refuse to be vaccinated, the state has the power to literally take you to a doctor's office and plunge a needle into your arm. If the, uh, Let me put it very clearly. You have no constitutional right to endanger the public and spread the disease, even if you disagree, you have no right not to be vaccinated. You have no right not to wear a mask. You have no right to open up your business. Wait, if can I stop you? Did, yeah. No right yeah, not state. to be vaccinated, meaning if they decide you have to be vaccinated, we have to be vaccinated? Absolutely. And if you refuse to be vaccinated, the state has the power to literally take you to a doctor's office and plunge a needle into your arm. If the vaccination Where is that in the Constitution? To prevent, if the vaccination is designed to prevent the spreading disease. If the vaccination is only to prevent a disease that you will get, for example, if there's a disease that will kill you, you have the right to refuse that, but you have no right to refuse to be vaccinated against a uh, contagious disease. Public health, the police power of the Constitution, gives the state the power to compel that. And there are cases in the United States Supreme Court. case that pops into my head, I may have the name wrong, is Jacobson. I think probably I have it right. Check it out. Um, you'll see that there are cases after cases after cases that the public health permits reasonable actions to prevent the spread of communicable diseases. Most of them grow out of tuberculosis cases in the early 20th century, but some are more recent than that. But there is still an issue of whether the governor has the authority to create laws, and that's a matter of state legislation. But you've opened up a whole new area here. So right. the governor has the right, or sorry, the government State. has the right to yeah. force someone to be vaccinated. Yeah. But how do we know what they're providing us from a medical standpoint is accurate? There are doctors who argue that Anthony Fauci is totally wrong in his assessment. And it certainly seems like week to week, month to month, they don't seem to know anything about this virus. I agree with that. I mean, I think there's a lot. I wrote an article early on pointing out two fundamental errors right away. Um, but uh, that's what a democracy is about. And if the majority of the people agree and support that for public health measures, you have to be vaccinated, you have to be vaccinated. They should give you an alternative. The alternative is to live in your home. Don't get vaccinated, but never, ever leave your home or live in a bubble. But if you want to interact with other people, you cannot become typhoid Mary. The Constitution doesn't give you the right to spread your illness to other people. And uh, 
you can disagree, you can be a dissenter, you can leave the country, you can go into a bubble, but what you can't do is say, I don't disagree, I don't agree with Fauci, therefore I'm going to take the law into my own hands and decide to spread the disease. That's not a constitutional right. Sorry. But Professor Dershowitz, how can you support a law that's made on the determination by a doctor? If you went to the doctor today and he determined that we need to chop off your leg, wouldn't you get a second opinion before you went and did what that doctor said? I wouldn't have him. I wouldn't even listen to that doctor. We're not talking about it based on a doctor. We're talking about it based on a legislature, based on the legislature's decision being upheld by the highest courts and by the Supreme Court. We're talking about democracy. Doctor doesn't make the decision. The decision is made by the government through democratic means. And if the decision is made by the government, if they told you you had to cut off your leg, that would be unconstitutional because your leg doesn't help them. It helps. Let's assume that doctor says to you, unless you cut off your leg, you'll die. You have a right to die. You don't have to cut off your leg. But if the doctor says, unless you cut off your leg, your leg is contagious and will spread your disease to many, many, many other people, that's a completely different issue. Constitution. If, if this legislation is based on the determinations made by doctors and they've determined something about, uh, it's, you know, we're, we're mixing the fields of medicine and law and the proof of something in law seems vastly different than the proof of something in medicine. A lot of the people who are advising us as to the future of vaccinations in this country are the very same people who have been kicked out of major countries for serious failures and injuries resulting from vaccines that they felt were going to be beneficial. I'm very troubled by the legality of what you're suggesting because it seems like we're very close to uh, a government mandate that we must all be vaccinated. I, let me let me I take you in another I direction. Hope we are. I would like I would like to see a government mandate. If 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 the safe vaccine is developed for uh, COVID-19, I hope it's mandated. And I will defend it and will argue that in the Supreme Court of the United States against your views. And you would get it if they came out tomorrow and said there's a vaccine that's ready. This one online, my children would get it, everybody would get it. If we felt it was safe, we'd make our own, obviously, sure. make our own judgment. If we decided to become civil disobedience and violate the law, uh, that would be uh, a different thing. But the law would be completely valid. I know you have limited time, so let me ask right. you about this sure. other professor at Harvard, Charles Lieber, he's been indicted. Never Sorry? Never heard of him. Oh, Charles Lieber is one of the world's leading experts in nanotechnology. He has Never been indicted no. along just with two of his Harvard. Chinese students who, well, let me just yeah. bring you up to speed. Sure. Two of his Chinese students who failed to declare on their student visa applications that they were members of the Chinese military. Dr. Lieber's group, in their research in the area of nanotechnology have created robots that are smaller than viruses that can actually <laughs> enter cells and carry out functions within the cell. And we have the very realistic possibility, Professor, Der Professor Dershowitz, that there are nanotechnology groups around the world and actually a high concentration of them at Harvard University that are creating these nanobots that could behave exactly like a virus and could even mimic some of the symptoms and impact that we're seeing from COVID-19. So I'm very concerned when the law can get behind this and force us to take a vaccine for something that's so misunderstood from a medical standpoint. Well, I want to make sure it's well understood and I don't think we'd ever get legislation passed unless there was a very, very widespread consensus uh, across the board. Remember how hard it is to get legislation enacted in this country. You've got to get the House of Representatives. You've got to get the Senate to approve the same language that the House approves. You've got to get the president to sign the bill. Then you've got to get the courts to uphold it. Uh, once all of those checks and balances have been satisfied, that's the democracy we live in. And, uh, you know, if you don't like it, there are other places you can go to. Not really. They won't let us leave New York. Let me ask you this. Because no, 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 no. You, leave, you can leave New York. You can leave New York if you tell them you want to give up your American citizenship and go to another country. You can leave New York. Yeah. Well, let's, let's stay focused on this research for a second. Right. So in this visit to Harvard, we've got Jeffrey Epstein wearing this sweatshirt. It seems like this is the same room, the same sweatshirt, the same day. We've got Marvin Minsky here, who is a world-renowned... Right. 
he's deceased now, but he was a world-renowned expert right. in artificial intelligence and robotics and haptics. And yeah. Yeah. So it seems like Jeffrey Epstein was very involved in some of these leading scientists at Harvard, right. and he has been accused by many of using sexual blackmail against people. So when I hear about, I've never heard. I've never heard of that. I've never heard that claim made. Well, there are alleged yeah. to be video recordings of people from the I, jet. I I hope there are video recordings of everything that Jeffrey Epstein ever did with anybody, because that would be my best evidence. Um, look, he was friendly with Frank Church, who was the developer of the genome uh, project. He was friendly with so many scientists. Uh, he fooled a lot of people into thinking that he had lived a, a perfectly uh, normal life. And we were all, I can speak for myself, totally, totally shocked when we learned about some of the activities. And, he, you know, he was friendly with Bill Gates. He was friendly right. with... Right. And but the fact is he engaged in these activities. And Bill Gates seems to be connected to each of the people that I'm speaking about. Charles Lieber, Marvin Minsky, millions and millions of dollars I've, to Harvard. I've, I've never met a Bill Gates. Yeah. I'm not suggesting that you've met Bill Gates. I'm just saying that Jeffrey right. Epstein has met Bill Gates. Sure. In oh, yeah. the book Filthy Rich by James Patterson, he says that Jeffrey Epstein had a trading floor on his 727 jet. Now, of course, that's going to mean there's just a computer data center there. I don't know if James Patterson would necessarily know a trading floor from a, a video server, but there are allegations that Jeffrey Epstein videoed, recorded things that happened all over his house. There's I hope former. So. I hope so. That would be great. Yeah. Palm Beach County Sheriff's deputy who has produced video footage allegedly to have come from Jeffrey Epstein. And I mean, we're hearing about nanotechnology developed by Harvard scientists that could enter a cell, behave like a virus. We've got Bill Gates pushing this plan for a virus. We've got him funding Anthony Fauci, the CDC, the NIH, the WIS. Sounds like a theory involving a dead man who probably- Well, it sounds more like a conspiracy that. because here we've got two people. How did Jeffrey Epstein get this $500 million fortune? Charles Ortel tells us there's no records of him conducting any trades at all. He never graduated from college as far as we know, but yet he was a professor at Dalton School, allegedly hired by Donald Barr, the father of our current attorney general. Can you address the relationship between Donald Barr and Jeffrey Epstein? Never heard, never heard anything like that. I didn't know Epstein when he was teaching at, at a high school or an elementary school. Um, I mean, these are all these are all absurd uh, conspiracy uh, theories. Epstein made his money by working for Leslie Wexner. You should ask Leslie Wexner how he made his money. Um, he got a percentage, as far as I know, of uh, all the money that he handled for Leslie Wexner. And then I know he got the house that Leslie Wexner had once owned. There's a dispute about how much he paid for it and all of that. But his money came, I think, largely from Leslie Wexner. That's what the evidence seems to show. Right. Donald Barr was the headmaster at Dalton School. He left right before Jeffrey Epstein joined as a professor. It's notable professor. that he... You mean a high school teacher? A high school teacher, sorry. Right. A math professor, a high school teacher, whatever we want to call him. But he, he didn't have a, a master's degree in teaching. A lot of people have a lot of questions about what I this relationship... Too. Never, oh, he never went to, I mean, he, he, I'm not sure he ever met this bar guy, um, but I know that he didn't have a college degree, and it was, he was a very brilliant guy, very smart guy, very good at mathematics, but you have to ask the right people those questions. Uh, ask the people from the Dalton School why they hired him. Ask the people from Bear Stearns why they hired him. There's a lot of mystery around uh, Jeffrey Epstein, but the idea that uh, he would be dealing in nanotechnologies with uh, Marvin Minsky. Marvin Minsky was the developer of artificial intelligence. Yeah, I think he was dealing that, with artificial intelligence with Minsky. It would have been Charles Lieber with nanotechnology. Along the lines when, of the surprises, when did, were when you did, as surprised as everybody else when Alexander Acosta announced publicly that he was instructed to lay off Epstein because he was involved in intelligence? It was not true. There's no truth to it. Epstein was not involved in intelligence, and I don't think that uh, 
that uh, anybody in the government ever told him to lay off Epstein. Nobody laid off Epstein. We, we got the deal because we had a stronger case. They couldn't prove that he had ever transported any particular woman in interstate commerce who was underage for purposes of sex. And so if you can't prove that, you can't make your case. Um, I do think um, I've only met Acosta uh, one or two occasions. I do think he got uh, a bum rap. I think he did what he could do. Uh, he got the best deal he could possibly get. If he had demanded more, we would have gone to trial and probably would have gotten a total acquittal. Right. And so Jeffrey Epstein, despite his close relationship with Ghislaine Maxwell, uh, you're saying unequivocally was not involved in Intel CIA, Mossad, nothing like that? No, of course not. Um, he, he had no connections to the Mossad. He had no New York Post with a retouched photo that is alleged to be taken by a bystander that I have evidence. It was taken by her attorney when I asked the reporters at the New York Post. They don't follow up with a correction. They hang up the phone on me. You ought to report this to the proper authorities. I think we're really getting into conspiracy land. Do you have any other questions to me about something that I know something about? I think that might be all the questions I have for right now. I thought that, these were things that you would know about. Thanks, Professor Dershowitz. Have a nice day. I'm sorry if he didn't like those questions, but those were the questions. Anyway, so there we go. I didn't have a lot of time to look at the comments here, but ending it by calling me a conspiracy theorist is not impressive. Appreciate Professor Dershowitz taking time out of his Saturday to join me. Um, I think he might have known some more things about some of that stuff than what he was letting on. Thanks for watching, everybody. Do me a favor. If you like this interview, if you watch CrowdSource the Truth and you're not yet a sponsor, get on to subscribe.